Today we will explore Montenegro. In this video you will see the magnificent beauty of Koto Bay, the incredible churches and chapels hidden in the maze of medieval streets filled with well-fed local cats. You will see one unique island and learn about the mysterious legend surrounding the place. Witness the ascent to the great mountain in search of the ruins of the ancient fortress. You will see a particularly tall spire which is one of the tallest in the country and of course the views on Quarter Bay that open up from it. Our journey began in England. We took a flight to Tivat and from there we took a bus ride to Kotor. Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're in Montenegro in a beautiful place called Kotor, surrounded by stray cats, but these cats are much loved by the locals and pretty much all the tourists from all over the world. But more about it later, we're about to embark on the most magnificent journey to this incredibly beautiful country and incredibly beautiful historical place called Kotor, once again Kotor. So we're going to explore places to eat and drink, spiritual and historical places too, and not to forget, places to chill as well. Look at that cat. Love them. Thing is about cats is I absolutely adore how chilled can they be and how zen and in the moment they can be. I wish I could be like that at times, I think. How cool is that? So, a little bit of history for you. Kotor was founded by the Romans and was known as Arcuvium. In the 10th century the city was ruled from Byzantium, then it became the city of medieval Serbia, then it was under Venetian rule, then under Hungarian, then it was independent, then it was under Venetian rule again in 1797, then under French rule, then under Austrian rule, then it became part of Yugoslavia, then in 2003, up until now, it is part of Montenegro. So you can see how vibrant the history of the place is. And culturally, it is incredible too. Great streets made of stone stand as if they did when they were built, thanks to materials, stone and relatively mild climate. The atmosphere of this place is incredible. If you ever come here, it really is nice to wander around and absorb the beauty. I always like to say, look up and you will see the history cast in stone. Ground floor is frequently changing, shops, restaurants and cafes take over, they're a signature of today, but only one floor above can reveal the details that can be found nowhere else. One interesting thing about Kotor is that historically it always had a thing for cats. The cats are always loved and looked after here. There is even a museum dedicated to cats and, to our surprise, there was a resident cat there too. That cat certainly didn't mind the visitors. Cats are everywhere and appear immediately when you're in a restaurant sitting outside. So many times we have seen them begging for food. Well, actually, begging is not the right word. 
cats never beg, they show up, expecting to be served food. That's your typical cat behavior, I would say. You can see tiny cat houses built for them, and it's just so satisfying to see the cats chilling in the sun, receiving love and affection from locals and visitors alike. food is incredible here. The seafood is very delicious and fresh. One thing is, it is frequently served with uh, potatoes and spinach. A rather interesting and perhaps different combination, but it does work well with all the dishes. This is a uh, local coffee, it's called Damacha Kaffa, which if you translate it, I believe it means uh, homemade coffee. It's uh, made in one of these jars which you put in the hob and hover above it and uh, it's sort of it's cooked like this. And this cake is called the Perast cake. It's a local cake. I've never tried anything like this before, but it looks gorgeous and you we were recommended that it's uh, served with ice cream so we're gonna find out what it tastes like mm. the flavor is very hard to explain it's, it's very succulent but it feels like you're eating many pieces of dried um, caramelized Orange. If you travel to Montenegro, most people speak English. Locals are very friendly and helpful, and if you are lost or in need of recommendation, never once we felt like they wanted to sell us something or treated us differently. Kotor was built with great assistance of Italian architects from Venice. Many architectural similarities can be seen in all the parts of the place and, of course, in the grandeur of the churches. I love how they form a visual harmony with narrow streets and beautiful plazas. so many chapels, churches and places where you certainly feel very different. I mean, it's so hard to put in words how you feel in these places, but you really feel like there is definitely something out there. When it comes to churches, there are quite a few for a size of the place. The most incredible spaces open up when you enter them. The smell of frankincense and acoustics immediately create the atmosphere. Some places have really profound presence about them and those are certainly among the special places. The history is breathing through this space. These walls certainly witnessed so much pain and hope, sadness and joy. Even those who are not interested in religion will find these places absolutely fascinating. The 
this chapel is very special. Its floor is made of local people's gravestones. Coming out of the sacred spaces, the heat is intense. That's why the ice cream is always a good idea. We figured to try something different and very special. Handmade rose-shaped ice cream. And here is how it's made. After the refreshing ice cream and a nice shot of espresso, we have embarked on a long ascent to see the ancient ruins of the fortress. I 
can only imagine how hard it was for people who built it and for those who had to carry supplies from town. On the way to the fortress we saw this, someone casually playing accordion and enjoying the views. I love moments like this abroad, something really nice and slightly unexpected. Euros is definitely not a lot of money for the amount of beauty and grandeur that you see from here. I specifically didn't want to put one of these lapel mics on because I wanted you to hear the ambience, hear the crickets and hear the, the sound of the summer. Is the magnificent fortress. It really was here since time immemorial. Those are the views of Cortor Bay. It's one of the most scenic spots in Montenegro. After this climatic moment, it was hard to imagine something bigger or different, should I say, something that could impress us just as much. a very short swim because one of the locals was messing around with the bottle and I figured well this is just doesn't feel right that this bottle is going off to the sea because the dog decided not to bring it back so I decided to go and swim for the bottle but unfortunately the currents took it away and I didn't quite make it to the bottle but uh, nevertheless um, it was a very pleasant swim uh, the water is really cold that's why most people don't really swim uh, and although it's uh, tail end of 
July. I'm quite surprised why the water is still so, so cold. So yeah, definitely a very positive experience. That was the next place we went to, the town of Parast, which was just as picturesque, only different. When it comes to places like these, you can't say if they're better or not, they're just different. When it comes to swimming, if you like your golden beaches, there aren't any. It's all made of pebble and it's all made of stone, but to be honest, I personally love it. Pebbled beaches all the way for me, no matter where they are in the world, that is my preference. So Perast is like a dream come true to me. And you'll see why. We went there a few times and I would definitely wish to come back there at some point in the future for sure. We took a boat ride to see the beauty of the town from the sea. The unprecedented magnificence of town could be seen and felt. And we also took a bus ride there. Now with the bus, we were quite surprised to see a vintage mechanical till operated by the driver. It's cool to see something like this, especially now, as the globalization pushes the same technology all around the world. When we arrived to Parast, the bus stop was behind the town and we were blessed to go through back streets and enjoy the hidden beauty of the place. These moments are the most precious ones when we explore the places seldom visited by tourists.
narrow pedestrian streets took us to the beautiful waterfront. The Koto Bay could really be appreciated here. A little bit of history for you. What once was a small 14th century fisherman village became a great outpost for the Venetian Empire. When the battle against the Ottoman Empire was won, a great amount of privileges were granted to Perast by Venice. One of the biggest was a permission to trade with no tax on Venetian market. Local merchants became very rich and by 17th century the place was a wealthy and successful. It was a place to be. This is a church of St. Nicholas with an impressively tall spire. This 17th century bell tower is 55 meters tall. The clock on the top of it was brought from Venice. Bear in mind, climbing the bell tower could be a challenge. Narrow stairs require a lot of ducking as you ascend, but gosh, it feels so authentic that I simply fell in love with it. Those are the views that open up from the magnificent tower. Rust has a hidden gem, the island of Our Lady of the Rocks. This tiny island is located just a short boat ride away from town. Legend has it that on the 22nd of July 1452, two brothers, both fishermen, saw something unusual at the place where they ventured too frequently to catch fish. When they came there, they saw an icon on one of the rocks. They were not expecting to see anything like that and they took it back to Perast. To their great surprise, the icon disappeared from their possession and reappeared on the rocks again. The brothers took it back again and once again the icon was gone and it reappeared on the rocks. Shocked and surprised, the brothers understood that this is a sign for them to build a church which would house the icon. Since then they started the building process tirelessly they were bringing rocks to where the island is now and dropping them into the sea. Soon the entire town joined them in the process. What was just a few rocks in the bay became the island you see today. Even up until now, every year a procession of boats comes to the island to drop rocks for the island to grow. The place is incredibly powerful to visit. There is something very profoundly special there, something that escapes the vocabulary, surrounded by the bay, no matter where you look, the views are incredibly beautiful. It is impossible to describe how you feel there, but one thing I can much. say is, I most certainly recommend you visiting it. There is some kind of stillness in the air, something that I can't explain, it's like the place welcomes you in a way. Not all places of spiritual significance have that quality to them. Here we just sat and watched the mountains, still water and this church.
What I personally find quite incredible about the legend is how these two brothers, how these two fishermen have managed to get the whole town inspired to build this church. Now think about it. It takes charisma, it takes leadership, it takes courage to do all of this. It's a massive project management exercise, if you will. So if they were scared about something that they could have seen and could have misinterpreted on that island, could they have had the power of persuasion? Could they have had so much inspiration to build something as incredible as this church right here? Somehow I don't think so. Somehow something must have happened so unique so inspirational that it didn't scare them but inspired them to build this magnificent church to strengthen the island i think something rather unusual must have happened that day What happened on the miraculous day of 22nd of July, I guess we'll never know for sure. But one thing is certain, is that fishermen don't turn into architects overnight. One has to conduct planning and preparation for such a grandiose project. One has to have a charisma to inspire people to follow. And one has to have great leadership and management skills to keep people contributing to this huge project. All of those necessary skills were also somehow given to the brothers, blessed by the miraculous find. The miracle was so profound that it didn't end upon the completion of the church. Now, people from all over the world, ourselves included, are coming to see this place. this video and maybe this piece inspired you to visit the beautiful Montenegro and until next time bye bye